This is a demo of the CTL cell counting software. The software is optimized for high throughput image analysis of individual cells via fluorescent detection. The CTL cell counting software is used to primarily detect viability of PBMC and is accompanied by the CTL cell counting reagent comprising the fluorescent dyes necessary for the staining of these cells. We have standardized these viability dyes after rigorous testing in our R&D lab. Since the dyes are standard, they allow the imaging conditions to then be standardized, thereby eliminating any subjectivity in the process. On launching the CTL cell counting icon, you can open an experiment that was either performed in the past, view the results, add more plates, or to just check the summary. If you are starting a new experiment, you should launch the Plan New Experiment tab. The Plan New Experiment icon launches a window which requires that you enter some details about your work. The study name is mandatory, but it can be common between multiple experiments within the same study. For example, I shall now name my study test, which was pre-existing. If you would like to create a new study, you can click on the Create New Study tab and enter the name of the study. The experiment number is a unique identifier and cannot be repeated within the same study. The software can either be used to determine the viability of PBMC samples counting live and dead cell numbers or to detect live, dead and apoptotic numbers within a PBMC sample. The software can also be used for specific target cell visualization applications such as the NK cytotoxicity detection. To learn more about that application, please visit our website for more information on the NK TCVA application. The cell counting software has the capability to image individual cells in a 96 well plate, a disposable three chamber hemocytometer, or a disposable two chamber hemocytometer. When using disposable hemocytometers, the stage can accommodate three of the 10 chamber ones or four of the two chamber ones. Depending on the type of chambers, you can either count 96 samples, 30 samples or 8 samples per run. The same software can be optimized to count multiple cell types as well. The scanning and counting parameters are set by CTL personnel to accommodate your cell type. For example, I have imaging parameters set for PBMCs as well as for tumor cells. At this time, we are going to see a demonstration of the live dead apoptotic numbers for a PBMC sample using a 3x10 hemocytometer. A few other parameters that we should specify here are dependent on the particular cell sample that you want to count. For instance, sample volume refers to the volume of the cell sample in your original sample. In my case, that was 5 ml. Expected yield tells you what the recovery percentage is and dilution factor is a measurement of the dilution of the samples counted with respect to the original sample. You have to remember that the sample counted is further diluted in the CTL cell counting reagent in a 1 is to 1 ratio. Since I am counting my original sample and I have added the dye to it, the dilution is 2. If you would like to have a particular cell concentration for your assay, you can ask the software to compute the volume for you as well. Typical Ellispot assays use 3 million cells per ml, corresponding to 300,000 cells in each well. After loading the parameters, you can now create your experiment. The next set of parameters that you have to load are the sample IDs. They can either be imported from a CSV or an Excel file, or they can be manually entered one at a time. You have to remember that each chamber should have a unique identifier, even if you have repeats of the same sample. If you do not wish to to have any IDs associated with the samples, you can also run a count without sample IDs. After setting the parameters, the software opens a window that launches the navigation and the selection of wells window. The software automatically starts with position 1 of the first hemocytometer chamber. Before starting your counts, you have to eject the plate holder and load your hemocytometers onto it. You can at any time Test the counts of your samples by clicking on the test count icon. You can repeat this for the dead count or the apoptotic count as well. If you have preloaded sample IDs, the wells corresponding to your sample IDs will be automatically selected. If you do not have any sample IDs, which is what we did, you will have to manually select the wells you are interested in analyzing. 
You can either select all of the chambers or you can select a few rows or columns. I am going to select all the chambers in my first hemocytometer. At this point, you can say start count and get started. If you would like to make a change to the dilution factor, you can do so at this time. Once you have made sure that everything you entered was correct, you can say OK and let the software do the rest of the work for you. You can watch the software computing the live, dead, and apoptotic cell numbers and then displaying them as and when it analyzes each chamber. The software displays the chamber index 1, 1, 1, which represents the first tray of the first hemocytometer and the first chamber. If you had entered sample IDs, that would show up here, and so would the experiment IDs. The dilution factor is what you had entered. The sample volume is what you had entered. The live count, the dead count, and apoptotic count is scanned, counted, and analyzed by the software. It then computes the live percentage, the dead percentage, and the apoptotic percentage. The software also provides the cell concentration in the sample and the total viable cells in the sample. The total viable cells is a representation of the total number of cells dependent on the sample volume and the dilution factor. The software first scans and counts the live and dead cells in a particular region and then it computes the apoptotic cells in the same region of interest. It superimposes the live, dead, and apoptotic images to detect cells that are positive for both the live dye and the apoptotic dye or the apoptotic dye and the dead cell dye. If a cell is positive for both the live and apoptotic stains, it is considered apoptotic. If a cell is positive for both the dead and apoptotic stains, it is considered dead. On clicking on the show magnified view icon, you can view samples as it is being counted or you can view the live count, the dead count, or the apoptotic count. On the counted live, dead, and apoptotic images, you will see circles that are overlaid. These are the cells that are being counted. The cells stained green are the live ones, the ones stained red are the dead ones and the ones stained blue are apoptotic. You will notice that there are some cells that are stained green or red or blue but are seemingly not being counted. If you remember the apoptotic cell rule, some of these may be positive as apoptotic or dead. They will only be counted once. Once all the chambers have been counted, you will be asked to remove the plate from the plate holder. At this point, you can add a different plate if you would like. The software now generates an overview of all the images that it had scanned and counted. By hovering over these images, you can see a magnified image as well. To check live dead and apoptotic images, you can use the F4 key on your keyboard. To check overlays, you can use the F5 key on your keyboard. If there is a chamber that you would like to recount, you can do so by double clicking on that. This launches the quality control mode. To remove a portion of a chamber, say to exclude a fiber or a bubble, you can use the remove area icon. Circle around the object that you want removed. The software will recount the cells in that chamber by removing the number from that area, averaging the number from the remaining area and then normalizing it to the total area again. It removes a similar area from the live, dead and the apoptotic images. Once you are satisfied, you can click on the accept icon. You can also finalize the entire set of images. Once you confirm this, you can print the data set right there. The printed version gives details on the live, dead, and apoptotic count, the live, dead, and apoptotic percentages, as well as the total viable cell count and the concentration. After you're done with this set, you can add more samples and repeat this all over again using the count without samples ID. You can preview the summary table or print the summary table one more time. You can also export the data onto an Excel sheet, which can be used for future purpose as well. You can also view the summary table, which allows you to see the final overlays 
just as you did in the quality control mode. From this, you can export the images as an image or as a PowerPoint, which can be used for presentations and such. This concludes our demonstration of counting a set of samples. Just before we end, I would like to show you what opening an experiment does. Since we just created and analyzed an experiment, when we open it again, this allows us to do everything I just mentioned a little bit ago, from counting more samples to viewing and exporting our data. Thank you for watching the CTL cell counting software. If you have any questions, please feel free to visit our website at www.immunospot.com or you can always contact the CTL staff at one eight 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 seven nine one four zero zero five. Thank you.